Hello everybody watching live right now. We're here with Bill Gates. We have some questions that we'd like to ask this gentleman about his uh, plans moving forward with the World Health Organization. Well, first, Josh, what I'd really like to draw everyone's attention to is the fact that I am an honest man. I don't lie. I don't, I, I don't lie to people. People are saying, all this on the total left-wing, right-wing extremists saying all kinds of crazy about my intention moving forward. It's just not true. It's absolute, absolute hogwash. I want to set it straight. Right now, what's actually going on with what I want to do with the world. So, I've already talked a lot about pandemics. Michael, my name's Josh. Whatever, Michael. And uh, I've talked a lot about population... <clears throat> Population issue. Too many people having sex and wanting to stop people making people. Too many people making too many people. I've talked at length about how we're going to stop that from happening. And we also talked at length about new gen, uh, you know, and just let me stop you right there. Uh, so, yes, you know, but first we want to know how you're going to approach with the World Health Organization in this response to COVID-19. Well, you see, Josh... I'm answering answering your freaking question if you just let me talk for a minute. Oh, okay, Josh? I'm trying to answer your question, Josh. So, um, okay. So, eugenics, as I was saying. Eugenics is about selecting which genomes we want to take out of the pool because it's just m messing up the situation for everybody. These undesirable uh, kinds of people we don't want to see populating the world in the future. We have a vision. Josh, we have a, a vision of a world, and it is shiny white and shiny, really pretty. It's a pretty image in our mind of the kind of world we want to create. But it means we need to go back and decide which elements we want to remove from society, what we want to cut away and take out from society. The, the things that, you know, really won't further us as humanity, we got to cut those things away. Like, I would do it with an axe, but that's a little bit too... You know, full on. People don't like it when, you know, billionaires start wielding axes. So, um, I think, you know, using a needle, guys, as an opportunity to help with health, help with population, um, with COVID-19, the virus vaccine, I think it's a perfect opportunity to, to use a, uh, to use a proverbial axe. Yes, I hear what you're saying, Bill Gates. So, tell us at the start, you were saying that, you know, your amount of tr truth, there's a lot of people questioning what you're actually doing. They, mm. Well, to give you more clarity, you know, who, uh, who you could just as easily call the who, what, <clears throat> who world order, okay? This plan has been in motion for a long time. David Rockefeller, he's a big proponent of the eugenics movement. Uh, in the 20s, back in the 20s, David Rockefeller, he did a lot of work, working towards, like I said, targeting specific kinds of people that we don't want to see in the loop anymore. And uh, my father was good friends, good friends with David Rockefeller, and I always looked up to the man. I even have stated, I built the foundations of, you know, I modeled, modeled the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on top of David Rockefeller's vision because I believe in David Rockefeller's vision in creating a total white supremacist world where, you know, we don't have to have our culture darkened by the darkies, for one. And uh, also, I, I'm really interested in seeing how we can introduce these technologies into our lives. Changing and revolutionizing how we see the... <clears throat> Yes, I, I think I can read your mind with the rest of that. You want to re revolutionize the whole world for everybody, how they interact with the world. Yes, okay, so what does that look like? Take us into a picture of what that will look like for us, Bill, please, because a lot of people are curious. It's, it's a bit scary to some. Well, Bill, what it looks like is everything being... Ne You've heard the Internet of Things. Okay, everything will be connected. Nothing. Nothing will be private. Um, you know, privacy is our enemy, right? Right now, we want total control of information, data, uh, interactions with people, because where we where there's these gaps, where we can't see what's happening with the people, there's room there for all all all, all kinds of nefarious plots to hatch. Okay, we got to get rid of that opportunity and move it over to us. Give us the opportunity over here, so we can uh, you know discuss what we want in private. Uh, we're talking with governments now. We want to be, you know, free from res 
Free from responsibility, yes. I will finish your sentences for you because that's what you've paid me to do. Thank you. I want to speak again now. Thanks. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've paid people to make sure that we are have immunity. We can't be pay re responsibility for our, mis our mistakes, uh, possible side effects with the vaccines. So we want to have privacy and we don't want to be held accountable to these things. We're trying to help and because uh, we're people people. I'm a people person. Too many people making people though that's the real problem because i'm such a people person and too many people making people i recognize it like thanos uh yes like thanos from the movie he you you're the one that has this the vision is like a burden just knowing that you need to reduce the population is is that pretty much what you're you, you're getting at because uh, i couldn't agree bill there's too many people and uh given that you know they've become dependent on the system to survive yeah, exactly. We've made a system where they can't survive independently. They're not allowed to, say, have so much food at home. They're not allowed to have water at home. They're not allowed to provide for their own families because they have to rely on the, go the government to, to do that uh, for them. So, you know, there's too many people given the finite scope of this government. How this government can help people is too limited. So now we need to cut the people down in numbers to make them better fit with this small model that we've built society in and around so that we can cater to society and giving them what they need to the people out there you know because we made it so impossible that you can source source your own needs in uh, independent ways obviously the earth can provide everything you need but we really made got all measures to ensure this you know you're trapped inside a finite kind of setup okay so it becomes prevalent now too many people for this finite setup now we need to remove some of the cut off the head of the you know cut off the feet you know where the heads of these people we got to get rid of the people at the bottom but we don't want to lose our feet because then we can't uh then we can't move that's pointless that's kind of productive Yes, um, I think I get at what you're saying now. So, talking back about this world that you're looking to create, about your future technologies, and, you know, explain more about what that looks like for us, if you can, Bill, because, uh, you know, well, okay, so everything will be connected. Internet of things, okay? You can't wipe your own ass without people being knowing about it in foreign countries, okay? Everyone's going to know every, everything about everyone. There's going to be no more room for these evil, dangerous uh, conspiracy theorists who say anything that might harm the freedoms and the, the liberties of people, okay? So we're going to take their ability to speak completely away, all right? And uh, we're going to control data. So every only information we want you to see, which is for your best, in best interest, that's what you'll see. Nothing else, okay? We're making the world so secure and uh, controlled, you won't even have to drive your car anymore. We, we're working uh, with the giving pledge. Uh, we've invested billions of dollars with Elon Musk and other wealthy men, Zuckerberg, to use our algorithms, our data tracking, to use the technology Musk is developing, all these automated vehicles we're going to have in the future. It's going to revolutionize everything about what people understand <clears throat> to be reality, yes, I, I, I think I see what you're saying. So everything would be automated. Uh, we won't need to do much ourselves except keep the cogs turning, if you will. And uh, is, there, is there anything more to this build, to this vision of yours? And uh, how long have you been working towards this? Well, it's, it, Frank, it's a lot. It's been a, it's a lot of effort from lots of people around the world for years. All right, for years since my father, since the Rockefeller. I, I told you we're friends. So it really comes down to when people are ready to have this vaccine. All right, we're gonna. We're gonna put a chip. We're gonna put a chip right way deep inside them. It's so deep. This chip will correspond to the 5G technology. We, we, we're having rolled out across the globe right now. It's gonna be some of the found foundations for this world. Okay. Basically, uh, if you've read NASA's Future of Warfare, it talks about these uh, mechanized dust. It can execute pathological missions inside your body. Okay. It can execute. Pa pathological missions, but it borrows into your lungs. Oh, yes, um, the Future of Warfare document, yes, it talks about that mechanized dust, it's a quote, a mechanized dust that borrows into the, the lungs and executes pathological missions. How could we use this to, um, to help the world and to benefit the people, if not society as a whole? Bill, give, give us some more information on that, if you if if you will, because uh, some people suggest the mechanized dust could be used in a negative way to harm people. Is that is there any truth to these theories, Bill? 
Well, absolutely. Um, but we're mostly going to be using it to, you know, heal people from the inside out. Why waste time and money and resources trying to help people in the outs outside world? We can do it on the inside with nano dust. Okay, so we've been uh, releasing this through the, you know, chemtrails. What people have been calling contrails and denying is actually, it hasn't been purely chemicals. It's, it's some of its chemicals in population control. That's the agen agenda here. Okay, don't forget that. But it's also it's been nano nanite dust, mechanized dust. And yes, it does have this ability to execute pathological missions as we program them to do whatever we wanted to do. So if you're like being a good person, you're listening to the rules and you're not stepping out of line at all, then you've got nothing to worry about. We're going to make everything work for you. We're going to use this technology to help you out when you need help. But if you're trying to stir up, you know, the world and create fear and not listen to us, then we can execute a pathological mission, give you, I don't know, something like... Uh, something like, yes, I, I'm very curious. When you say execute pathological missions, you're talking about, you know, achieving certain biological effects, you know, um, so you can use it to heal. Yes, heal, but also, you know, give people uh, cancer, give them uh, AIDS, give them a heart attack, whatever we choose. We will have a whole menu like Hungry Jacks, but we can, based on like ways to kill your ass. If you're not playing along with us, we've got this, we got this plan, all right? So we're gonna have the chip installed, and uh, then Musk with his satellites on the globe, there is nowhere you can go uh, in the world where you'll be free, where you'll be uh, safe from this technology. So if you're not playing along, we'll just, you know, send a send a command to your chip saying, I want this guy to die from a heart attack, please, now. I want these people against us. I want these people to, to uh, you know, fall asleep and never wake up, is what I'm saying here, Frank. We're having this technology right now. It's a, it's a footstep now. The, uh, the, yes, the footstep of this, the doorstep, you mean, of this, yeah, the doorstep of this new world. And this, this sounds amazing. Absolute control, absolute security for the people. I cannot see how this is not in the best interest of the people at home watching right now. Um, you know, there's too many, too much room for error, too much room for people to violate the rules. So we gotta, yeah, that's right, we gotta remove all the room possible for pe for people to violate the rules. There's too many people escalating, uh, violating the rules, thinking they can do what they want, regardless. Too many people thinking they're in this position of power, and uh, it's dangerous, dangerous to society. So what I pose, what I plan and propose to the world, and we've got to get behind this, is that you let us remove any opportunity, any fr any freedom you have to plan these nefarious plots that's going to affect humankind. And let us do the planning for you, because we're the ones that are equipped to do the planning. We're the ones that actually have a plan in your best interest. We know. We know what you need, and we go we're going to give it, and then some. We're going to give you everything you need, and then some. And then we're also going to take some away. Too many people, too many people, it's raising too many people in this world. So obviously, yeah, we gotta go break a few eggs, break a few eggs to make an, make an omelette. Yes, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, thank you, Bill, for this interview. It has been absolutely uh, enthralling listening to this plan. This future world, the technocracy, if you will. Some call it the corporate tech, uh, corporate technocracy, if you will. And uh, I can't wait to see it really functioning and thriving. And yeah, thank you. You should feel proud, uh, Bill, for being part of this and uh, creating a world where people don't need to do anything. Exactly. People won't need to think anymore. People won't need to do anything for themselves anymore uh, because we will do it all for you. Okay. We save you the, the hard work of having to research all this stuff. It's really depressing, really dark. We're like, don't do it. That's really dangerous. That's why we're moving right now to cut people out, <laughs> deleting things online that we uh, don't... Um, Mm, yeah, don't 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 want to see spread around. This is it bollocks. It's a big curve of stupidity in what's going on. We're trying to lower that curve of stupidity and uh, just fill in the gaps with what we want you to hear. So we're deleting whatever we find. It's challenging, challenging our, our narrative we're pushing right now. If anyone that watched the the Who event, the drill about this exact scenario, you will see how important it was. Even then, we were aware of this danger. We were aware of how people might re react. We've got countermeasures in place. Snopes, uh, Snopes is doing a great job. You know, fact checkers. Uh, luckily, there's no fact checkers um, checking the fact checkers at the moment. So that's that's uh, that's pretty good. Yes, I couldn't agree. Um, and thank you, by the way, Bill, for paying me to finish your sentences because. Um, you know, not to suggest you're lazy and you can't finish your sentences yourself. Obviously, you're a hardworking individual, Bill. 
a very hardworking individual. You since your kid, your parents, you said you you no thing, no activity was not punished or not re rewarded. You know, so you're very driven for that reason. Yes, Bill, uh, Frank, I'm Bill. I'm not confused about who I am. I know where I came from. I I know I'm so good. I know I know I am so good, better than most people. I know. I know why I know how people what what they need to to survive this this thing we've created okay because I am a driven individual I was challenged as a kid everything nothing was free everything had to be earned everything had to be earned the hard way I was punished uh, for everything I dropped my noodles once on uh, on the floor and I got you know locked up in a cage for like a week and had to just eat, you know, onions and, and snake sheddings for like a whole week, Frank. That taught me that day that there are consequences for being lazy. For not keeping the noodles in the bowl every time. Well, that's uh, that's quite intense. But, you know, it, sometimes we need intense crisis, intense measures to teach us these intense lessons. Yes, it, I couldn't have said it better, Frank. Couldn't have said it better myself. We need these... Is intense things to happen. We need intense measures. I'm the one that's going to put these measures in place, and then the world's going to thank me for it. The world will thank me for it eventually. A small portion of the world. The rest of the world might kind of have to sit on the sidelines and just do as we say and have no room whatsoever to challenge anything anymore. But that's okay, because as long as the the big guys at the top, their smiles. When they're smiling, they're so much bigger, so much more important than all the little guys at the bottom that aren't at the top. Those smiling, the frowning faces, the tear, the complaining, that doesn't really concern us so much. It's just like noise from flies, but buzzing, buzzing in our ears. Yes, I, I couldn't agree. Those flies, it can be very annoying. Yes, thank you. And that's all we have for this uh, interview. Thanks for watching. And uh, remember, Bill Gates, he's helping to stop people from making people for the people. Because he's such a people person.